pick the right option. All right, so guys, you might um, need to just acknowledge that it's being recorded. Okay, Mark, um, yes, if you would send me an email to deridanews at gmail.com, then I will, um, I'll add you. And you want to be included to the Zoom meeting and, and any other updates? Yeah, that'd be great. Thank you. Okay. Dorada News at Gmail. <laughs> yeah. Um, I can just put it in chat. All right, folks. I think. Um, We're, we're waiting for a few more people, but um, thank you everybody for being here. And we'll just do a quick round of introductions. Uh, here's Sylvia. Um, and I'll just call on you as I see you on my screen. So let's start with David Oliver. Oak Hill community, part of the board. Welcome, Nadine. Hi, Nadine Henry. I'm in the Sugar Springs development. Uh, I'm an event planner and I have just started teaching classes uh, on Get Set Up. Awesome. Uh, Mark W. <clears throat> hey, Mark Watson. I live uh, over by Nadine off of Miller Springs in Amarillo and um, uh, concerned citizen uh kind of a business owner and um thanks for having me awesome thank you glad to see you here um simpson i have <laughs> sorry <laughs> that's what your name shows up as yes my name is jeffrey simpson i'm the president of the hoa at fort farmington which is uh, off of um public road and uh, this is my first um, my first attendance uh, to this meeting, so I'm looking forward to the, the content. Wonderful. Um, Jeffrey, I don't know if everybody can hear you, but I'm having trouble. I don't know if you're far from your microphone or something. Is everybody having trouble hearing Jeffrey? Yeah, I can't hear him either. Okay. I heard Farmington, and I'm very glad to have you here. I know Farmington's a big neighborhood off Hubbard Road. Okay. Um, Carrie, you're next up on my screen. Okay. Hi, good morning. Uh, I'm Carrie. I live in the um, Avalon at Mellor Creek uh, townhome community um, on the um, HOA board as a treasurer, and I am a business consultant. Um, I do, um, I work with small businesses, mid to mid-sized businesses, um, and I'm glad to be here. Uh, also a neighborhood com uh, community advocate. So if anyone has any projects in mind or anything they want to do around the Dorada area, you can always count on me to, you know, help, help with, I mean, join you in whatever efforts that you have to make this a better place to be. Awesome. Thank you, Carrie. Uh, Shirley, is that Shirley Clark? That's it. Hi, everyone. Um, happy to be able to join you again. Um, I'm the president of the Association for Greenleaf Village, and I have been around for many, many, many years. I've gone away once and uh, for about seven years came back and uh, hoping, along with Teresa and Sylvia and Carrie, hoping that we can get things rolling over here to change the outcome of Derrida. And I can see it coming, Teresa. I can feel it coming, Teresa and Sylvia. So let's keep up the good work, everybody. <laughs> Thank you, Sherry. Yes, I, I believe so too. All right, I see Mel Renner. <clears throat> yes, uh, I'm the uh, HOA president of the Forest Pond community for many, many, many years. Uh, and a relatively new board member on the Dorida Statesville community organization. Welcome, Mel. 
All right. Uh, Melissa Gaston, thank you for coming. I'm Melissa Gaston. I am the um, executive director for the North End Community Coalition. We call ourselves NEC, which um, encompasses the eight neighborhoods um, a lot bounded by Statesville Avenue and North Graham Street. Thank you for the invitation to be here. I'm excited to be here and hear what's going on in the Dorada area. Wonderful. You're our close, close neighbor over there and very, very happy to see you here. Thank you. Um, Tamara Parker. Hi, um, I'm Tamara Parker. I live in the Farmington community um, where Jeffrey is the president and I was the past president just prior to him. Um, I have seven oh. and, I buy, and I buy property in the area. So that's it. I enjoy um, coming on these meetings and hearing what's what's going on in the Dorita area. Thank you. Oh gosh. Sylvia. Yes. Sylvia Cannon, uh, president of Dorita Statesville Road and would like to say appreciate Teresa putting these meetings together. Uh, we're working and we're trying to do better and we will see what we can accomplish. It's not easy, but if we keep fighting, we'll make it work. Thank you, Sylvia. John Eckert. Good morning, Teresa. My name is John Eckert. I am the president of the Balcom Ridge Homeowner Association. We're located next to Harrington Woods uh, on the corner of Harris and Mallard Creek in that area with about 67 homes. And this is my first time able to call in. I've been monitoring everything, but uh, finally had the opportunity to join you today. Great. I'm glad you're here. And I'm assuming you must be on our email list. Yes. Um, okay, and we're um, we're thinking we we propose that we're going to run um, a meeting more for neighborhood and HOA members because we gather that um, a lot of people and you know that's just life um, cannot always make a nine a.m. Thursday right. meeting. So um, I think we're we're going to try that starting um, in October and just try to do quarterly meetings. So. Um, that's kind of an aside, not really on the agenda, but you all should have an email from me um, just with some proposed dates. I basically pick, I think, the third Tuesday of the first of, of every quarter and um, put the dates out through 2022. And uh, we'll, we'll try that. Um, we can open up it up to the public and eventually, hopefully, we can have sort of an annual meeting as well um an annual public meeting that's the idea so check your email if you are um on an hoa or a community organization um and if you didn't get it and you want it let me know and or you can always find me at derida news at gmail.com which quickly because i always forget i am Teresa mcdonald I am on the board for Dorada Statesville Road Community Organization. I am a realtor um, of 17 years in the broader Charlotte area, but very focused on promoting and advocating for Dorada. And with that, I'll just go to the agenda. I was hoping David Stickley would join us today. Um, he is the new commander at the American Legion Post. So the first item on our, our agenda, and I'm sure you may have seen the talk on next door, the flags on West Sugar Creek are looking a little raggedy. And um, we're, we're working to, to help David and the, and the guys over at American Legion. Um, both, with, and some of it's still sort of in discussion, but with, with um, raising funds and also the actual physical schedule of, of making sure the, the, the flags look good always. So they are working on it. Um, 
Jack is not here. He's a new member at American Legion, I believe. And he is also part of that volunteer team that's gonna go around and update those flags here in the next week. Um, I forgot where I was going next with that. Um, oh, sorry. Any comments? Anybody got anything? Um, if you want to volunteer or donate funds, we're, we're working on a way, you know, some, some kind of electronic donation. Right now, Sylvia walks around. <laughs> she keeps an envelope on her and uh, Gary's Barbershop, I know, also takes donations once in a while when, when you know, from a lot of his clients. Um, um, one thing I'm working with um, a Mason's group is um, doing um, a, 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 a um, what's the word? Um, they're going to be collecting funds and one or two winners will come out of it. Um, you can set up a cash app account so you don't have to go out in the coronavirus world and people can go ahead and do their donation there. And then on a certain day, you can go ahead and do your drawing and uh, your top winners, you know, they'll know exactly in advance, top prize 25, second prize 15, last prize 10 and uh, collect money that way. Okay, so that's an incentive for donations? For donations. Okay. Yeah, I think, uh, and that's where I was gonna go. I, the, the biggest obstacle is really not the funds we we don't have much trouble raising the funds there are lots of people who are very generously supporting this effort it's just um finding that volunteer group and and the system that's going to keep them looking good and so we're we're working on that so just just to let you all know if you do see raggedy flags. Oh, and the other point about this is that it's very much an unofficial operation. We do not, nobody has permission from Duke to have those flagpoles on their utility poles. So it's not, you know, I, I know people tried calling Duke and they've called the city and nobody really knows who maintains the flags. Um, and that's because it's kind of an open secret. Um, but the American Legion has been doing this for many, many, many years and, uh, you know, well before 9-11, 2001, but at around 2001 is when they decided to leave the flags up year round. And we in Derrida liked that idea because it kind of defines the downtown area and, you know, it, it gives that, that little place um, some distinction. So that's all I have on that. If anybody has anything else to add, but if you do want to help or participate, we Marissa, have... yes, ma'am. At me. one time, the flags went from Niven Road down to the intersection of Sugar Creek and Graham. Uh, those were removed due to the construction. The original plans, which I would like to see them go back to, of course, I don't have any input, input in it except talking to David. I would like to see us go from the intersection all the way to Niven. But now there's a lot of those poles that have pieces of wood that stick out. They're not uh, sanded, so to speak, that get hooked on, the flags get hooked on. So that's why it's imperative that we have a group that would monitor and take the ragged ones down and put a new one up. So anybody like to volunteer, you know, please get with Teresa or me or David Stickley and let's bring that, that honor back to Dorada. Yeah. I know the, the previous volunteer who headed this up and really he did a lot of it by himself was Lester Lemley who moved to Harrisburg a few years ago. He used to 
he would replace them as as they were reported to him that that there was um, you know that it was torn or caught up or something had happened to it. Um, and maybe we can get back to that system. Um, that's probably the better way to do it, but it, it's going to take a volunteer or two that that are prepared to be on on flag emergency duty. <laughs> so, uh, all right, that's um, that's all we have, and I will convey all this to David. Um, and and of course, if you're a veteran, um, the American Legion is a great organization to join just for fellowship and. They have their building right on Borkham Road. So it's a very convenient place um, to have social gatherings when we ever start having social gatherings again. Um, before the pandemic, I tried to get to a few of their open events. Um, they used to have a wonderful holiday party with you know delicious food and that kind of thing is um, is going on there, and you know, in Dorada, we need these gathering spaces. Uh, so, just another word on that, and I will move uh, on if nobody I else. I have a comment. Add. Hello, yeah, Mel. Yes, uh, I just wanted to say, if, if by chance any of you know any uh, uh, veterans of Afghanistan, uh, I think they really deserve appreciation for serving our country. Uh, me being a Vietnam veteran, I kind of know what it's like to be a veteran of a so-called lost war. And uh, I mean, that, that's not what it's about. It's about serving your country. And I think they just deserve a tremendous amount of appreciation for all the sacrifices they have made uh, over the past 20 years. Thank you. I agree. I agree. Thank you. Thank you for, for bringing that up. Um, Mel, thank you for your service also. Thank you. All right, I don't have any huge updates on the West, on the Sugar Creek Corridor playbook process. It's still ongoing. They're, they're really in the process of still gathering community input. The consultants for the city um, I don't know of any public meetings that have been scheduled so far. I do know that they're working on uh, the same process for Albemarle Road and also North Graham, Melissa, I, you probably know about that. Um, so the city department doing all this uh, is pretty busy, but um, we'll, we'll look for some updates from them. They, they did say there would be some kind of big public reveal um, and event, probably virtual at this point, I'm not sure. Uh, and, you know, you can still go and watch these old meetings. If you want to try to catch up on what's being done, you can text I-85 to this number here. And then you will automatically get updates if uh, once any events or, or anything else is um, lined up for that process. But we're very excited that that the rider was included as a sub geography on that corridor that they extended the study and the, the whole um, operation to the rider. And I think it's already paid dividends because one of, uh, one of our buildings that has been an eyesore for years on West Sugar Creek has received some city funds, uh, a grant to help them with their renovation. And I, I have some pictures in the slide deck and um, you'll understand which building I'm talking about. Uh, these are just for reference. I don't have any, any update. Um, these are the rezonings that were approved. So you always have this list once they start moving dirt, you know that we've talked about them. You can find all the details here. This big one, Innovation Park, that's huge. And it's still pending as far as I know. Um, and it's not a huge change from what it, what it currently is. It's just really an office park, but they are going to add some residential and some hotel and some retail 
converted to more of a mixed use, which will be a great um, addition to, it's not strictly Derrida, it's really part of the university city service district, but it's, you know, you don't have to get out on Harris Boulevard or any interstate to get there from Derrida. So we consider this part of our area of influence. Oh, there's only one rezoning for uh, 2021 so far. Uh, and I didn't actually look to see if there was an update on that one. It might be coming up for a vote soon. Um, and now if um, we can just let me know mm -hmm. if you have a neighborhood update and just keep it keep it brief and I'll try to make some notes so that if people don't want to watch the whole meeting, um, I can include notes on this page. So does anybody have anything in particular from your neighborhood that you wanna share with, with the group and the broader community, an event or really so. um, anything that's going on? Yes, ma'am, Sylvia. The, the re reconstruct, well, it's not really reconstruction, but the changes at Niven and Gibbon, uh, they're, going to make a dedicated left-hand turn coming from Oast, uh, from Statesville Road to turn left up to, to go to Gibbon up to 115. They have already taken the concrete out the side of the garage and got flagged. So we are moving to have a straight through lane, dedicated straight through lane and a dedicated left turn lane coming from Statesville Road, heading towards- Not Statesville Road, you mean Nevin Road. Coming from Statesville down Nevin, Nevin. Oh, I thought they were gonna do a dedicated, they were gonna change the lanes coming from our, from Allen Hills area on Nevin. That's not the change that they're making? If you come from Ribbon Walk and you're gonna come to the intersection and turn left to go over to 115, there will be a now a dedicated left turn lane. The, okay, la yes. the lane that would take you back into Rida is going to become a straight through lane. And okay, they, yeah. have, they have started working on getting the concrete to widen the straight through lane in and the flags marking the side. So the, the construction is beginning to start. Now, okay. how long it'll take them to finish it, I don't know. Okay, yeah, that's great news. I don't know if any of the people on this call spend as much time going that way, um, like from Ribbon Walk towards Derrida, um, but it's that intersection has been a big headache yes. um, and very dangerous. So yes. that's good news. Sylvia, yes. is, is that, do you think that that's why they dug up the auto shops parking lot partially? Uh, that's that's something's going to have to be. It's going to be something's going to have to be widened or moved or something. But his parking lot is 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 torn up now, so maybe that's what's going on. That they they do not have to remove anything except that concrete where they move the parking places back some. It is wide enough to go straight through, and they have tore up that concrete. That's part of the start. Okay, well, the, the, the dedicated left turn that you're speaking about, <clears throat> right now they already have a left, coming from Ribbon Walk, there's already a left turn there, and then there's a, the, that left turn is the same as going straight also. So now there's going to be three areas. There's going to be a left turn, a straight through, and a right turn. No. The straight through will be straight through and right turn will be one in the same. I got you. Okay. Thank you. Yeah. And then that's pretty much what people do anyway, but it just becomes very dangerous. Because, yes. Um, so, yeah, that's very good news. Anybody else got anything from your neighborhood or? Um, 
Is oh, Teresa just the corner of Dorado? Teresa, John? it's John, John. Yeah, the Harris, the former Harris Teeter that was on Mallard Creek and uh, uh, Harris Boulevard. Uh, the sign just went up. Uh, it's going to be a food lion. Oh, so they're, they're in there. Yeah, they're in the remodeling right now. I didn't see oh. a date for opening, though. But yeah, the sign has gone up. Oh, wonderful. That's why we have these calls, because all of us, you know, we're all in different corners and we just don't see the same thing. So that is that is good news. I hope oh. that I don't know if that means anything for the one that exists on I'm Graham. Creek and North Graham, but um, it's I'm very happy to see another. Do they know what they're doing with the property across the street, the old Rite Aid or the old Walgreens? I don't yet. There's something going on in there. Yeah. I, I haven't well, seen any signage on know. that. And if you can't because make a meeting, shoot me an email. And that goes for any of you guys yeah. anywhere that you're, you're seeing things, a sign go up or dirt moving or something. Just let us know. I mean, as much as I try to monitor everything, I can't be everywhere um, at once. And I really rely on, on people to shoot questions and updates. They're so remodeling inside. So they're they remodeling inside the one on the corner of Mallet Creek and Harris or the one on the corner yes. of Graham and Sugar Creek? Because there's two, because they yeah. have a food line there too. Graham, yeah, the one and on... Graham and Sugar Creek is remodeling. I yeah, they're remodeling about the too. one on Harris across the street from the new food line they're proposing. Does anyone know anything they're... about that one? They're in there too. There's contractors in there as well. Wow. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Thank you. Yeah. So um, we don't know yet what's going to happen there. The one, the one that is at North Graham and West Sugar Creek uh, has a, a private LLC as the owner, so couldn't really guess what they're doing. Um, and most of the time, you know, it, it's the owner probably upfitting and trying to place a tenant before they all these prop those properties I think are for sale. Um, but that's good to know, and we'll keep an eye. And anybody, if you see anything that um, gives us a clue what's happening there, let us know. Teresa, <clears throat> yes, Shirley. I don't know if you and Sylvia have have noticed the digging on the old. Nivens Road there, not the new Nivens, but the old one, the little short street now. Um, there's some digging and something going on there. Anybody, has anybody else seen Tell that? Tell me exactly where, Nevin between which road? Okay, if you're coming, if you're coming from uh, uh, Ribbon Walk, going toward town, instead of going all the way out Nivens, you, you look to the left, you look to the left and there's old Nevins there. Okay, yes. Look with me, Sylvia. You may not travel that area anymore since they've got the new Nevins there. Nevins and Cindy Lane that connect, that's the yeah, new Nevins I Yeah, I know I exactly where you're talking about, a, a kind of across from Nevins School, Nevins. That's school. right, yes. that's right. Um, a lot of hitting there. Yeah, I will check on that, but I'm pretty sure it's a it was a little subdivision of homes that was approved many years ago, actually, maybe as much as three years ago. Um, and I'm pretty sure it's it's going to be I some see. single family homes over there. OK, and it'll connect to that road um, that goes into the existing neighborhood. I got you. Thank you. Oh, um, OK. I'll send that that out. I, I'm forgetting all the names of of the the new subdivision, etc. But I think I know where you're talking about, and it, it's something that we've known was coming. But um, you know, these things sometimes take years to, sure. and by then we've forgotten. <laughs> yes. So, anybody else got any um yes. any updates? Uh, Sugar Springs, uh, we just before COVID hit, we had started um, trying to do block parties. Um, the first one we had was pretty successful. Uh, we had a lot of involvement. Basically, everything was on um, El Dorado Avenue, and it will stay there this time. But in about four weeks, uh, just the, the families on El Dorado were going to get together 
everybody will have a card table, we'll have a grill out there, you bring your food, that sort of thing. And we're gonna to try to reconnect. Okay, um, wonderful. Yeah, that's nice. Uh, hopefully if COVID goes away and I'm not, I honestly feel we're gonna be in this thing for about another year, year and a half, especially with the, the next variant on its way into town. Um, we're gonna to try to keep um, branching out to the rest of the houses in Sugar Springs. But okay. for right now, we need to keep it small. Good news. Thank you, Nadine. And Jeffrey, I know you're trying to get a word in here. Uh, I hope my microphone has, has increased in volume by now. Um, yes, it's better. Outstanding. Um, one, one, one notice that I have is on the corner of Sugar Creek and uh, Mallow Creek, a little strip mall across from uh, Maria's restaurant. I see a lot of negative activity with regards to stores leaving, uh, breaking, uh, you know, breaking the stores and things of that sort. Is there anything that's going on to, to, to challenge or, or to address what's going on in that, that, that little area? Um, well, I think we're all working on that. Um, there's a lot of vacancy right now with um, Save a Lot moving out and CVS moving out and a couple of the smaller um, stores are vacant as well. Uh, so... I can try to get an update over there um, on, I know they had a tenant to replace CVS, was gonna be some kind of medical service. Um, they're really trying to find a grocery um, that would be willing to come in at the corner there, but it would have to be a very small, um, it's not even big enough for an Aldi, so. Um, we're working on it and, uh, you know, any, any ideas anybody has, because it's, it's a matter of trying to attract various things or, or business ideas, because we've, we've got the space, we've got a great downtown area, um, but the vacancy starts to cause the problems because once, mm -hmm. once there's just not enough community activity over there, um, it becomes dangerous. Yeah. So, um, yeah, well, welcome, welcome any, uh, any help over there in terms of, of attracting uh, tenants. And I'll talk to the broker and, and see, maybe he'll, he'll join us one day. He's been the broker for that, that owner over there for a long time. And just I, I would love to see like a grocery co-op, you know, you have small, small businesses and um, farmers that come together because they used to have a co-op at the 7th Street Market uptown, but they're not there anymore. And they, they're they having an issue with tenants also. Um, I think with the demographic here and having people who are very familiar with, you know, farming and also um, harvesting, I think that would be a great idea, you know, per season, you have a co-op who prepare boxes of, of fruit and produce uh, for people in the in the neighborhood. And if you live in the neighborhood, you get a discounted rate versus people who are driving from out of, out of the area. And this gives people an opportunity per season to come and set up shop instead of just waiting for the weekends for the fresh for the farmers market. And maybe they can't afford a, a booth at Camp Norfin because they have a farmer's market every week, every Wednesday. But I think this would be a great opportunity to set up some, some aisles or um, just a whole co-op situation where you could sell like fresh coffee beans or even coffee uh, uh, produce that's in season, um, you know, just to be able to bring a nice, a, a freshness to the area instead of just some, some low end grocery store, like I say a lot. Yeah, I agree. I agree. I agree. And, I agree. and also, I, I hadn't, I don't go out a lot anymore, but every Saturday in University City, they have a farmer's market. So to garner those people who are there until October into a, a permanent building, that might be a jump start for something like that. Or yeah, or like a seasonal lease, right? Um, I would love to know what happened to the co-op in, um, in the uh, 7th Street Market, 
uh, because they would send out an email, I think once a month, about what it is that you were looking for. And they were prepared boxes for people. Um, and there's also a nonprofit organization where, I would, where I'm from, um, I think it's called Angel Food Ministries, and they would prepare boxes for, for families uh, who were low income through the churches that were in the area. Um, so I would love to see something like that just because of the fact that if if the pandemic is going to be here for another year or so, uh, people aren't really having a small grocery in the neighborhood would be very um, uh, would be very, very beneficial for folks who a aren't in school every day because they're because they're learning remote. And a lot of these kids aren't going to be able to eat because they aren't they, they're not in school. B, a lot of the senior citizens who are around here. I live in between two um one low income uh, subsidized uh, senior living facility or neighborhood and then another one for special needs. Um, and I see them going back and forth um, in their wheelchairs or, you know, however, whatever way that they can going back and forth to that that store when there used to be one. And now that it's not there, you know, I'm not sure where they're getting their food um, and having. I mean, having something like that to cater to this type of community, I think would be a win for us. And I would love to be able to propose that to the broker if if they're interested. I mean, I would love for them to clean up the the, the parking lot um, and also, you know, clean up and update some of the buildings to make it more marketable for some of these folks here. But um, I think that'd be a great opportunity, something new age and forward thinking. Yeah, I mean, I'm part of the barrier is if they do make the investments that causes the rents to go up, which is why a lot of these um, types of co-ops and things cannot sustain themselves in in some of these places because the you know the the rent becomes too expensive. Um, and over there, you know, they they really I because I did I I asked I would love to see a coffee shop or something small. They have a subway, an old subway space over there that is pretty much ready for a small little restaurant. But the barrier really is that the rent is too high for a small business, a small startup, a small you know community effort. Um, it's more geared towards those kind of corporate franchises, um, the the rent that. So it's it's kind of a circular problem because the they they're not doing very well at attracting even those corporate um, tenants anymore. Um, especially with CVS gone and and Subway and Save a Lot. Save a Lot said they made a loss over there, so. You know what? Whatever um, they they did not really connect or or meet the needs of the community because they they couldn't even make any money. So that's. Uh, Do you yeah. think that they might have been a, a corona uh, casualty? Um, I don't think they were doing oh, well I'm before corona. Sure. That that could be that that could also be a case although I, I don't know of many you know I think grocery stores didn't suffer as much but yeah it's possible it's possible that they weren't really geared up for online orders or you know some kind of order and pickup situation that um Walmart and all the other grocery you know though those kind of um entities have made it very, very easy to. I don't know if this is related. But, uh, hello? Yes. Uh, Mel? Yeah, I don't know if this is related, but was there not some sort of food assistance program being conducted by Ebenezer Church that was produce oriented, that kind of a thing? Yes. Mm -hmm. Yes, there was. yeah, through the whole um, pandemic. Or oh, I mean, maybe before, but yes, they they had donations of food and weekly weekly pickups, but you really had to drive to pick it up, um, which is a barrier to a lot of people that do need that that free food. And then the other thing was um, Ebenezer was picked up by a, a, a different organization, and Ebenezer was the drop off point. So I think that kind of changed. Uh, they're, they're not doing it at all right now. Uh -huh. um, right now, they're doing the missions work for Haiti and for Louisiana. Okay, yes. Uh -huh. 
And we're actually so, this is Shirley. Them. This is Shirley. Um, in ref referencing uh, Mr. Simpson's concern about the crime, everybody, please be aware of your your property because there has been some. Uh, what is that uh, part that's under the automobiles? Catalytic converter. Oh, the catalytic converter. Uh, one of my one of my neighbors had indicated to me this week that everybody needs to be on guard because as quiet as our neighborhood is, that doesn't mean that there's not a lot of lurking at night. Um, they're starting to steal catalytic converters off of automobiles in the area, just to let you know. Okay. Is everybody signed up for neighborhood mm -hmm. and for citizens? Those are two great ways to keep up with everything that's going on and all the different developments in the area. Yes. Do you mean next door or? Ne I'm sorry, next door and then okay. there's one called yes. Citizen. Yeah. Um, yeah, and Mark makes a good point, of course, in, um, in chat about rents. Um, the issue that we also have had, and Shirley and Sylvia and everybody can probably attest to, is if the rent is too low, then you also sometimes get tenants that that are just not good for the community. So right. um, it's it's a fine line. <laughs> yeah. Well, yeah. Anybody have anything? Neighbors. A lot of times, Teresa, these are not really people in the neighborhood. They're people coming in from outside. Yes. Yeah, exactly. Um, so, uh, you know, I'm sure everyone will remember the, the old fire station building on West Sugar Creek. And we had some tenants there. And really, it wasn't even the tenants so much, but they have sort of went, went down a road, maybe literally where they, they lost their their clientele and it just became more of a, a hangout and um yeah just not good and and very hard on the community so um we've had a, a challenge uh, we've had an suv stolen in the last few days in the uh, forest pond neighborhood oh wow lady, lady who left her door and car, car running she went in to get a bottle of water and she came back out and her vehicle was gone wow there's I wondered what she was doing. I saw the video with the with the car door standing open, and yeah, that's just very bad timing and bad luck. We, have, so, we actually I'm, have a order. David, you're just going to have to jump in. I see your hand up a time or two. You're just going to have to jump in and make. Yes, this I see. Uh, the uh, for what it's worth, we actually have a covenant in Forest Pond that you cannot leave your garage door open unless you're busy working in and out of your garage, you know, tending to your yard or vehicle, whatever, uh, your, your door, your garage door must remain closed. And part of the reason for that, the, the police even encourage that you not leave your garage door open because it invites potential vandalism. Yeah. So I was just to mail, just to piggyback on that. So um, I mentioned last last month that we we're working with the city for a neighborhood matching grant. Then there are grants that you guys could possibly qualify for to enhance the safety um, and deter crime. I suggest you guys look into that because the, the city is willing to give you guys money um, if you're able to match it with volunteer hours that could help with surveillance and lighting um, around that area. Um, so just, just for food for thought, uh, just because even though it's, it's the the homeowner or the tenant's fault that they left their door open and it is in the covenant. So, you know, there's nothing you guys could do about it. But as far as like lighting and, and signage to, to deter a lot of this criminal activity, uh, the city will help pay for that. Thank you. All right, David, let's give David a chance, sorry. No problem. I just want to ask a question. I had sent some information about the neighborhood listening session that was um, for this week, but I was unable to attend because I had some prior engagements and I didn't know um, if anyone was able to uh, get any information that might be beneficial. Uh, that was, um, I think it was- That's the, the transportation. I did attend and I do have a slide and some links, um, which I, I intend to go over in this meeting. So we will come to that for okay. sure. 
Was it was it beneficial or I just happened to was reading about some that's why I passed it yeah. on. It no, like, it's it's very beneficial and they they have a very user friendly way to give feedback and project ideas and safety concerns. Um, but it's related to transportation um, and I'll come to that. Um, all right. Anybody else, Mark, you look like you might be ready to say something. I'm sorry, I don't see all the people, all the cameras, uh, you know, up, so. Yeah, hey, thanks. Um, I, was, I was typing it, but, but I'll just say it. I, I got some, uh, some litter pickers and uh, safety vests and um, uh, some other supplies from the city for uh, adopt a highway type stuff. And it's actually a, adopt a city street or something. But uh, it's, it's part of Keep Charlotte Beautiful, KCB. And um, I'm going to start doing some of those. I'm not sure if it's lower or upper Mineral Springs, but it's, it's the, the side of Mineral Springs between Neil and 85, uh, not Graham. But um, so over in that area, I'm going to start doing a, a litter cleanup. I'll just put a sign out and try to get people to come on a Saturday. I'll see how that goes. And then uh, if it's successful, then uh, maybe we can expand to different parts of the area. Um, maybe quarterly, maybe maybe get a, a church group involved or a youth group or um, various groups can raise their hand and say, we'd like to be involved this, this time around. Um, I think it'd be really cool, just community uh, education especially for the kids because you know people just litter and if you don't learn not to litter then maybe you'll grow up to be a litterer <laughs> right so, right that uh, is wonderful mark teach yeah. them how to great good good job thank you for do doing that and uh i know we've got a lot of people on this call that do similar in their um part of dorada and it makes a huge difference because, you know, the more litter and just chaos that you see on the streets, that it affects everybody's perception. It affects their trust in, in their neighbors, in the local government. So it's a, it's a relatively small thing, it seems to be, but um, it makes a huge difference. So thank you to everybody that um, gets involved in, in litter pickups whether you do it through the city and they do have great resources and support with the um, Keep Charlotte Beautiful program. Um, just however you do it, uh, it, it's a great job. Teresa, did you guys hear that um, North Carolina is the third dirtiest state there is? <laughs> oh, I, I, I know. I, I heard that a couple months ago. Not surprising for me. Yeah. Yeah. And, it, you know, it's a cultural problem, too, because yes. I, I don't, you know, somebody is is throwing litter out, um, you know, and and I. I don't know. Anyway, um, that is all for neighborhood updates. I want to get to these couple more things that we've, the city is working on. Um, right now they're doing a big drive to get public input on the 2040 plan, not the plan, but the mapping side where, where they're, they're now mapping these place types. Um, and they have already created the map that that takes the existing zoning, what's on the ground right now, and um, classifies it in this new classification. Um, and then obviously the, the plan is to plan for the future, the future growth and um, so on. So I know it's very wonky planning stuff, but if you can, we, we need input from Derrida, especially um, on all of these city efforts where they're looking for community input. So I have here um, the 2040 mapping piece. Uh, here, I, I kind of took the map 
and this is Derrida roughly, or the, you know, the Derrida area. And you can see all of this color is what they call neighborhood one. It's basically single family. Um, and then, so a lot of Derrida is single family. Campus refers to those big kind of office parks. Um, so this is, you know, IBM, et cetera, over here. I think the white is stuff that it may be vacant and or un, in the process. This piece over here has been approved for multifamily and they've started construction over there. So I'm not exactly sure what the white represents. Um, but anyway, if you follow the links to fill out the, the city survey that they're, they're running right now um, through October 1st, um, you'll have the chance to just answer some questions about mm -hmm. where you live, what kind of land use, because this is land use basically, what kind of land use is around you, what you would like to see around you, what you would not like to see around you. Um, so go and and provide that input. I'm going to send the, this link out on the, the email with the slides from this meeting and hopefully we'll get a lot, a lot of input from people in, in the Derrida area. There's, there's the link. They're calling it the Live Work Play Survey and it's a little bit complicated on honestly on the computer, but anybody has the skills um, to do that, please go and do it. Any questions on that? Hi, Teresa, this is Melissa Gaston. Um, yes. I was just appointed to the Planning Commission in July, so I don't know a lot about that, but I can tell you I received an, an update this morning that they want to do a lot more community engagement around that um, survey because um, people have been struggling with that <laughs> to provide I the information. I believe it. I right. truly believe it. <laughs> and so they, they really want to get community engagement. So they are going to be hosting um, community engagement surveys or um, sessions throughout all of Charlotte. So they're going to be starting, I believe, the 14th through the 28th. So it's a two week period. I don't know. Um, which neighborhoods or which areas have been selected at this point, they're going to be sending that out later this week. So I'll make sure to um, keep you abreast um, and make sure that there's one for your area so that you all can join and give your information on that because it's vitally important. I've been working on this way before I um, was selected to the Planning Commission about them trying to get the the new 2040 plan and everything um, working. So I will keep you posted. I have your email address, so I'll make sure I get it to you so you can share the information, okay? Yes, thank you. I know a lot of people way, you know, prefer to give input in person and the city does a good job of, of hosting those kinds of things. We, we had one very early in the process here in Derrida when they were you know, doing the community input for the 2040 plan itself. And um, we had one outdoors, it was pre-pandemic, but we just um, happened to schedule something and it worked very well outdoors. And I think that would be um, pretty safe. Otherwise, I think they do kind of drop-ins where, you know, they have staff sitting in a, in a venue um, all day long and the community is invited to come in and complete the survey. So lots, lots of opportunities to provide your feedback. And then um, obviously the goal is that the city is going to pull all this together and try to see you know, what really rises to the top as priorities from the community. And then you know, include that in the plans and the policies, et cetera, going forward. Anybody else, any questions on that? Um, and then the next thing, oh, I didn't know. Oh, I must have, what did I do? Did I click on a link? Sorry, I think I took myself out of my presentation here. Oh, I did, I clicked on a link. That's a mistake. Okay. I'm just trying to move, oh, okay. Sorry. I don't know what you guys are seeing. <laughs> okay. 
Um, try using your cursor. Oh, there you go. Okay. Yeah, I found it. I didn't know um, if what, what you were seeing, but I was changing my own screen. Um, all right. So then the next thing, and this is to David's question, the city was having these listening sessions around their strategic mobility plan, which is transportation um, and transportation, including all modes of transport, um, you know, road, car, rail, bus, bikes, walking, um, all, all modes, because we, we need a good, robust mix as Charlotte grows. Um, right now, about 75% or more. I, I That was the figure I heard in their presentation, but I thought it was over 80% of people pretty much drive alone in their cars to do things. And if you didn't already know, that is what causes what we don't like, traffic and congestion. So this is an opportunity and the city um, is, is working hard again to try to get that input from everybody. If you're very tech savvy, it's very easy to do online. This, this particular um, system that they have is, is really very, very easy to do. Um, and I don't know if I had planned to demonstrate it, and I'm not sure if you'll see my screen if I do. Tell me if you see, do you see the new, the website webpage yes. popping up? Okay, good. So um, there's a lot of information here. They still have, I think the listening sessions may be finished. Um, there was one that I attended. This is how they divided the regions. So we were in this north, middle and outer region. Um, and I did attend that listening session and um, I suppose it may be recorded and available to watch if you want to catch up. Um, it looks like these may be links. Maybe that's a link to a recording. Um, there were about seven people there of which two were staff. So five community members, a lot of people from the Prosperity Village area were there. Um, there may have been, there was somebody else from 28269. I didn't know exactly where they were from, but uh, the listening sessions I think are complete. The last one was yesterday, yeah. So, um, but they have the, the map um, to provide other input. Um, and I'm trying to find where exactly that link is. Um, tell me if I am keep passing it because I've got things covering my screen here. Read the link to the map. This is the... Here you can see, you know, it's it's no coincidence that there are so many things to talk about um, as far as the city goes, because this is these are the things that they're working on. Um, oh gosh, I'm sorry, I cannot, I don't know why the link is not here. I wonder if I just Google it real quick. Or well, actually, I had it um, had it in email, and I'm sorry. Now you're going to get into my email. Okay, there it is. Sorry about that, chaps. This link, I will make sure I include the direct link, but this is um, the engagement part of this for the mobility plan. And it's pretty easy. It works a whole lot easier than um, the, the 2040 plans map input. Um, so, Go ahead, you can see some things have already been reported. Um, 
in or you know all over town and you can start seeing where um you know maybe multiple people are reporting similar issues the blue would be project ideas uh the red is safety concerns and it's really transportation focused so um i, I would hope that we'll go and get a whole lot more in our little area of focus but of course if you're traveling some other wet place to work and you're noticing some issues, um, you can, of course, put those on the map as well. I hope you can't hear my dogs howling. Because they're now decided to start howling. Um, over here on the left there are different layers. So you can actually look at, um, so let's say, premium transit. This is access to premium transit. The darker the color, the better the access. And as you can see, the whole of Derrida has very little access to what they call premium transit, which is really what you need for people to even consider using public transit over hopping in a car. Um, and that that's that's a big problem right here. And I don't know if you can see this clearly enough, but this is roughly where Derrida is. That's Harris Boulevard over there, 85 and 77. Um, sidewalks, you kind of see the same sort of story. It's a little harder now to see Derrida in there, but um, certainly the newer neighborhoods do have sidewalks, but then, you know, the bigger connecting roads historically had no um, sidewalks. Slowly adding, we, we definitely had a lot of road improvements um, in Derrida, and with that comes sidewalks and bike lanes. Um, too late for the new design, which is really protected multi-purpose paths along those big busy roads. And hopefully, hopefully we'll have <laughs> have the chance to go back and retrofit all those big roads, the ones that we've just added to Derrida, like the North Graham Street extension. Um, I don't know about you, but I'm not ready to ride a bike on the same surface as cars that are not even vaguely sticking to the 45, which is too fast, too, too uncomfortable for me on a bicycle. But these cars are not even sticking to 45. They're, they're going way faster on, on some of these roads. So that's David, if you wanted to, this this is the, the link. I could actually, I suppose, put this in chat so you can, wait, let me get to the, just the basic input page. I'll put this link in chat in case. Um, but yeah, great opportunity for, for us to, to give that input to the city. Any questions on that? Nope. And then I just have a couple more slides. We're almost done. Um, this, this is the building I was talking about earlier. I just keep the slide in because it's such good news. Uh, the renovation is going to take several months, but um, we hope that it'll look pretty good um, when it's done. And they have got three spaces in there um, that would make great coffee shop, restaurant, whatever. They've got a few parking spots in the back, um, maybe not quite enough for a real gathering space. I, I don't remember offhand what the requirements are, but um, they do plan to have some parking in the front, just a few spaces. And then they've got, I think about 12 that um, will be in the back. And then just my ongoing list of the commercial properties. I don't have a lot of updates. I'm glad to hear that. Um, Food line is confirmed to be coming in where that uh, where the old Harris Teeter was at Mallow Creek and, and WT Harris uh, and um, update some of this um, 
Parisa, is the um, where we had the meeting you were talking about earlier outdoors, the yes. event site. Is it still in operations, or did they close that down? Um, it's as far as I know, it's still in operation, but you know those kind of events that certainly took a big hit during um, COVID times. And so I'm not too sure. Mary Ann sometimes attends our, our meetings and hopefully she can update us. But if you don't know what we're talking about, it's next to the post office on West Sugar Creek, that beautiful old house. Mary Ann is the owner and she did a major um restoration over there and it's got a beautiful it's an event space basically i call it our van landingham which is the very beautiful in and uh uh event space in plaza midwood it's not quite as big um but certainly a, a beautiful historic space to for events oh but yeah marianne still you know as far as I know, she hasn't closed that down. She's just hanging in there until um, in-person events and things get back to quote unquote normal. Which house is this, Teresa? It's next to the post office oh, or, you know, kind of across the little street from the post office. Oh, okay. Okay. Yeah. Um, yeah, it's, it's a beautiful big two-story um, house that goes back, um, you know, a hundred years or so. It's not designated historic, but um, they might want to think about it because we don't have that much uh, historic designation in Dorida. Uh, this map, I just keep going. I haven't updated it recently. Um, I don't think there's anything to add except over here, Griffith Lakes, which we all heard about, um, I believe it was July's meeting or maybe August's meeting, uh, the big development that is underway over there. You can see it. You can see the new road coming in um, across from Davis Lake on Harris Boulevard. Oh, um, yes. So I need I need to add the marker for that and the details because that that is underway and it's been it's been a plan that was actually approved in two thousand and seven. So mm -hmm. that'll give you some idea. Of course, the recession um, was five years of that, but um, it'll give you some idea of the time that it can take for some of these plans to come to fruition. Um, but this link is always in the slides. Um, and you can look at it. I try to link things. These question marks are properties that are either vacant or on the market. Um, as you can see, there's a whole bunch on West Sugar Creek. And then, of course, the little cluster at WT Harris and Harris uh, Mallard Creek. And then the green are the rezonings. Um, approved and then the orange is uh, pending rezonings, which I'm sure I can update some of these to green. I have to look at that. Um, our, as far as our capital projects go, that we did talk about that um, was this intersection here at Nevin and Gibbon, where they're improving that, adding the lanes and off and the uh, sidewalks. They've completing all the gaps. So pretty much all along Gibbon Road, there should be sidewalk now, which is a huge improvement. It goes um, it's up, not it complete. Goes up to Crater Park, but there's no sidewalks in Crater Park up. It's dateful. Oh, no oh, there's still some missing over there. Okay. On the, the uh, Statesful Road side, on 115 end, there's a section that's no sidewalks. On Old Statesville? No, on 115. Well, when Old Statesville is 115. Okay. Yeah, okay. Um, but yeah, and all along Gibbon, not quite. Not uh, quite complete sidewalks. Thanks, Gibbon, Terry. Gibbon, I think now is finished with sidewalks. 
Yeah, I have to drive it, but it it looks it looks good, especially you know most of these neighborhoods here, including the brand new um, the R Horton development, uh, have sidewalks all the way and can potentially get to Ribbon Walk that way. And there's some gaps here still, um, sidewalk gaps. So those are the kinds of things that you can add to that map that I show I just showed you for transportation, where there are sidewalk gaps. Um, that's that's a good example of something to put to put there, um, especially if you're walking or riding a bike around. Okay, yeah. and they've also put sidewalks on and finished up on uh, Oneida. Yeah, because the bridge gets fixed down there. There, that's going to be sidewalk all the way from Graham Street into Cary Hills. Yeah. Um, yes, it's. Um, that's over here. This this is Oneida. I have yeah, and it's like now that. all the way from the Graham Street in. Oh, this is it here. This is Oneida to the here. neighborhood. Yeah, but so, that's not open yet. They they had closed the road right here where the creek crosses. Or the bridge, the the bridge, the tunnel, the top pipe under there had cracked up so bad that they were afraid it was going to collapse so they were replacing all the pipes and stuff yeah so at the moment that is good but there, that's part of the the other big capital improvement project in derida there there are yeah. two two that involved stuff you can see and uh closed roads and construction etc there's a lot more that i didn't put on the map that involves stormwater and various things like that, that um, it's just, there is a lot and I honestly don't have the time to put them all on the map. Um, all right, I think that's all. These slides are just, they're always in here with various things that you can look up if you want to know what's going on. Some of them are just repeats of more detailed slides that are ahead of this, but there they are. Um, if you want to put a plug for the red line on on the map for the city, do that, please, because you know <laughs> someday maybe Norfolk Southern will agree to share that line, and um, there, there's more chance if they know how much of the community is interested in having that that rail line that would come through Derrida and head all the way up to Huntersville, Cornelius, Davidson, etc. Oh, University City Partners is always a very good um, source of information. They cover a lot of the uh, what we consider Derrida area. Um, so that's always a good place to look. And I think if Melissa, if you Camp North End or North End Community Coalition has a website, we're not, we don't have a website um, here in Dorado States for Road. Um, we need to work on that. But if you do have um, a website where we can see updates from your side of town, that would be great. I'll add it to this list. We are currently working on updating our website, um, so it's, it's being revamped right now, but I will be glad to share it with you once we get it back up and running, so I'll do that as well. Um, a lot of stuff is going on in the uh, area, so we're trying to keep everybody abreast of what's going on, so that's going to be one of the ways, and we also um, are going back to have... Um, Every other month, we're going to have a community-wide meeting. So the last one was in August, and we'll be having another one in um, October. And I'll be sure to share that with you as well. Um, we typically tend to have developers come to talk about um, events that they are, or not events, but development that they are doing. And uh, we're expecting to have about four or five more um, announcements about development in our quarter. Some good. Some are interesting. <laughs> so <laughs> definitely I will want to keep everybody abreast of that. So I'll be sure to keep in contact with you all and share any information I have. Yeah, thank you. Yes, and uh, for anybody here in Derrida, paying attention to what is happening in Camp North End area is, um, is kind of a glimpse into what may eventually come our way. So um, 
you know, as as developers run out of space or land or opportunities close in, it tends to creep out. And that's exactly why now North End, which of course was was really um, catalyzed by Camp North End, the, the beautiful development. And if you haven't been there, it's it's a wonderful place to visit and show visitors and uh, and just very interesting because it's a it's a historic site, and they really made a beautiful effort to keep keep the historic buildings and reuse a lot of the stuff. And it's very interesting. So um, yeah, we we need to be paying attention to what's happening in Camp North End because that's just a couple of miles down North Graham Street from Dorado. Oh. Um, all right, I think that is everything. I'm just clicking through my slides again. I just keep list, uh, links going here. Uh, there was a great town hall yesterday, um, which you will find if you go to um, the city's site, probably, or even um, our district rep in District 4. They did a town hall on the 2040. They had a lot of presentations from the planning department and from the UDO, which is the new zoning ordinance um, that will come from this whole mapping process and planning for the next 20 years where we expect to accommodate another almost 400,000 residents to the region. So, um, Lots going on and, and lots of opportunity to, to have your say. So I hope yeah. that people in Derrida will, will get on it because we're historically not, not super engaged um, in all these things. And part of that is the city's fault. And part of that is really our fault for, for not seeking out these opportunities. Yeah. So, yeah. Teresa, I have to give out a shout out of kudos to Renee Johnson. She's doing a wonderful job uh, in that position. And she seemingly is paying a lot of attention to the Dorada area. And I do appreciate that. Uh, in addition, has anyone heard any rumblings about uh, uh, widening out Dorada right into where they're gonna start, that, where they're re renovating that new building? Anybody heard any rumblings about widening out, I'm sorry, Sugar Creek, west right around where the new building is well the renovated building is widening sugar creek yes no no there's there won't be any widening of sugar creek mainly because it's it's a lot of it is um new norfolk southern right of way mm -hmm. oh okay um so no and we don't really want wider roads um because yeah, that home, speed, the, I know, speeding the and other problems um, yeah. that the down derida downtown is is going to take more of a main street character which um you know and it may take years to come to fruition if not decades but yeah. um but that's kind of the vision and the goal, and and it's pretty much been been the way um, the vision and the goal even since the nineteen eighty five small area plan for Derrida. But yeah, no, no, no widening mainly because of of that because NCDOT sure does like its wide roads. <laughs> Oh, hey, you sent that uh, that map comment, that map input link to me only, it looks like. Oh, I'm sorry. OK, yes, I think you're right. Let me just. And uh, let's see. Um, let Carrie, just... I'm going to put my email in here if you want to email me about the Avalon uh, activity. Is Carrie still on? Oh, no, Kerry did have to leave. Um, she hopped off about a few minutes ago. Oh, there she is saying I have. OK. Yeah, yeah. Um, all right, yes, she, I know um, that she does something with the Keep Charlotte Beautiful um, resources, etc. cetera. Um, 
not everybody does, um, but it is it's certainly there. There is support and, and materials and whatnot available there if you're going to do a little cleanup. I should probably put a link to that in this useful links um, for communities who want to do a little cleanup with, with the city, um, with the support from, from Keep Charlotte Beautiful. Um, so I will add that. Um, I think that's everything. Um, anybody got anything else to add? Or... I do. I do. Mel. Yes, I have an announcement to make. Uh, my significant other is Gail Haley, and we don't live together, but we've been together for some 20 years now. Uh, she moved to the Dorada area about three years ago, and she lives, as Teresa knows this very well, she lives in a rather unusual house built by an architect. It's a pier house. Uh, I've spent an awful lot of time on her property doing all kinds of things, mostly artistic in nature, okay? We missed the mark last year of registering, but this year we are the only ones in our area that are registered for Yard Art Day, which is Labor Day. Uh, this is where you have an opportunity to drive around properties and see all kinds of yard art. Uh, we are very much inclined in that direction. So we're participating and we're the only ones in our area, area at all. If you are so inclined to drive by, again, the Yard Art Day, is on Labor Day. Uh, the address is 7231 Ridge Lane Road. Uh, it's in the Dorada area, and you might find it interesting. Oh, that I am so excited about that. Thank you. Uh, um, yes, that's another thing that uh, if you have yard art, and um, I will put the link in this too, to get some ideas of what people show, but um, it's it's a great uh, activity. It's citywide, in fact, maybe countrywide, but um, certainly citywide. And you can enter your address and be included in in the tour that that members of the public will make to whatever they're going to do. It might be an Instagram opportunity or they're just interested in, in touring the, the artwork that people have in their yards. Um, and it's it's a wonderful event. And I'm so delighted that we've finally got somebody from Derrida. I knew Mel and Gail were likely candidates for that and very, very excited that um, that's on the menu and I'm going to be in town. So I hope you guys, if you're in town, you'll take a little drive by there and um, check the map and see what else you might want to drive by. They're, they're focused in a lot of the more trendy hip neighborhoods, Noda and Plaza Midwood, um, but more and more Grove Park, I know, has participants and um, so yeah, would love to see more Derrida homes on that list because it brings people from outside in and as a realtor, that's that's a good thing because they see a part of town that they really might not be otherwise aware of and realize what a special place we have here. Mel, so, did you say that address again, 7231, 7231, spell the street. Yes. It's 7231 Ridge Lane Road. Sounds a little redundant. It's off Rumpel Road. I got you. Okay, thank you. Yes, yeah. um, I said earlier today, I started uh, teaching classes with Get Set Up and it's an organization for seniors, people over 50 years old to learn any type of skill. They have over 350 classes. And Teresa, I'm gonna send you, I'm gonna text to you a flyer and a flyer that shows my information for my class. The next time my class is on is on the 14th and it's on event planning uh, virtually and uh, in person. Um, you can do anything. You can learn how to use a computer. 
You can learn how to use, uh, make photo uh, albums, um, take care of your finances. So it's a wonderful thing and everything is free. So, so um, you have seniors that are in their homes and they don't have anything to do right now. They can actually go on if you're bored and hit a button and get into a class immediately. So um, if you could put that in the notes, I would really appreciate it. Okay. Uh -huh. Tell me the name of the organization again. It's Get Set Up and then it's dot .io. Get Set Up. Okay. But it's, it's uh, they have, um, I'm an interest group leader. They have actual teachers who uh, do everything from nutrition to meditation, uh, exercise classes every morning. So it's a lot of fun. Yeah. Um, all right. That sounds wonderful. Very needed, I'm sure. Is it all virtual? It is all virtual. And you will be in uh, the company of people throughout the United States, Australia, India, Canada. Uh, the teachers are from all over the world and the students are from all over the world. And it's a great way to make new uh, relationships. Yeah, wonderful. I'm trying to put the Yard Art Day link in there. I hope that's correct. Um, but the map is live, so you can go and see where um, people are. And there's also a link to participate if you want to make a note to participate for next year, because um, I would love to see more, more Derrida um, destinations on that list. And who's that? That's Melissa. I'm sorry. Can I add Melissa, one more hey. thing? Another link to add to your list. Um, you may want to add for this um, the All in 2040, which is the Center City Vision Plan. It's out there, and they have a draft out there now as well. Um, Center City, of course, affects everybody. So if people are interested in that as well, they've expanded their reach about three to four miles outside of Center City in their plan. So um, it doesn't quite get to deride at this point, but you definitely want to put that as a link so people can take a look at that draft plan because it talks about what their plans are as well. So it's a uh, Center City Partners and it's all in 2040. Um, oh, Center wonderful. City Vision Plan, yeah. Yeah, thank you. Because yeah, yeah, we in Derrida are really, Pretty close. Within, we're in six miles certainly of, yeah. um, of the Panther Stadium, so ah, uh, we're we're not we're very close to within their area of study or influence. Right. All right, folks. Anything else from anybody? Uh, otherwise, I'm going to call it for today. We're at ten thirty. <laughs> I guess we need to allow ninety minutes for this meeting. Okay, I am going to stop the recording.